When your designs get big and complicated, keeping track of all the objects can be difficult. Today we'll look at Affinity Designer's selection tools and how they can make your life easier. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we have a short but useful tutorial for how to select objects in Affinity Designer. Now I'm sure you know how to select objects one at a time, but what if you wanted to select multiple objects based on common properties like fill color, stroke color, styles, and more? Well, that's where the select same feature is useful. So to start with, I have this kind of chaotic design here. Lots of shapes, lots of fill colors and strokes and all that kind of thing. Now I have this star here and you can see it's yellow. What if I wanted to select all the objects that have that same fill color? Well, I can easily do that. And to do that with my star selected here, I'll go to select, select same, and then fill color. And I've automatically selected all the objects in my document with that same fill color. And I'll just move them around here so you can see which ones they are. But notice how there are different shapes, but because they have the same fill, they got selected. Now I could also select based on the shape itself. So I'll select this star again, and I'll do select, same, and then here I can select shape. So I'll move these around again, and notice the ones that got selected. These are actually all different types of stars. They look different, but because I made them with the star tool, and they're still a star, they'll get selected here. This one here has rounded corners, this one has multiple points, but they're still star objects. We can also select based on stroke color. And this one's a little strange, let me show you how it works. I'll select this square here, and you can see the stroke color is black. I'll do select same stroke color for this one, stroke color and I'll move them around so you can see which ones got selected. A lot of objects got selected that you might not expect here. For example, this donut here got selected. Now the reason something like this got selected is because it actually has a stroke color of black, even though the stroke itself is zero points. So in other words, there's no visible stroke, but it still has a stroke color set. So that's something that's a little strange about selecting objects with the same stroke color. Even if the stroke is size zero, it'll still get selected. Let's look at another one that might trip you up a bit, selecting on the name. So I'll select this square here. And again, you can see it's named rectangle down here. So I'll go to select, same, name. And you'll notice nothing else really got selected. And the reason is when you select the name, it has to be something different than just the default shape that it got when you created it. So over here, these are all called rectangle just because that was the name of the shape when I created them. Let me call them something else. I'll say my rectangle, and I'll call this one my rectangle. So I name these two my rectangle. Let's select this one here and I'll do select same name. And now I can see both of these rectangles did get selected because I gave it my own name here. Now if you did want to just select all rectangle shapes, you could easily do that. I could select this and say select same shape. And now all my rectangles are selected. Now there's also a tag color option. Now by default, all your objects probably have no tag color. So if you select that, you'll just select everything. You can actually give your objects a tag color by right clicking on them in the layer stack. And then down at the bottom here, you have some options. So I'll select green. I'll make a bunch of these just that green color. I'll even give this ellipse here the green tag. Let's do that. So now if this ellipse is selected, I'll do select same tag color. And the ones that I gave the green tag to are selected. You can see if I go down here, it's these ones. So here's a practical example you may run into in real life. I downloaded this clip art from Envato Elements. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link down in the description there. But let's say you have something like this and you can see there's this common color orange everywhere, but maybe you want to change it. It's kind of a pain to individually select all the orange elements. If I scroll through the layer stack, you can see there's a pretty complicated design with hundreds of curves, maybe even thousands or so. So let's say I wanted to select all the orange color. Well, I could choose one. I'll pick this skull here and I'll say select same fill color and now they're all selected and if i wanted to change this color that'd be very easy to just modify the color here so i can make it red or something like that not a very halloweenish color but you kind of see the idea here maybe you want to make sure all the blacks are true black so let me select something here i'll select this cat and i'll do select same fill color i can see it's actually not truly black here so what you can do if you want is you can actually drag this and make it actually black so I fixed all the blacks in this document in about five seconds. Now you could also adjust the stroke color, but I looked through these files and it doesn't look like any of them actually have strokes. Now, in addition to selecting objects that are like the one we currently have selected, we can also select all objects of a certain type. So you can see I have multiple types of objects here. I have artistic text in several places. I have shapes. I have open curves. I have closed curves. With nothing selected, what I can do is I can go to select, select object, 
And now I have all these different object types I can select. So for example, if I wanted to select all the artistic text, I could click art text. And now I have all my artistic text selected. And this could be useful if you want to quickly grab all your text and put it into a group or something. I can also select all the open curves. So I'll do that. Open curves. And now I have these ones selected, which are curves that aren't closed. And this could be useful for debugging a design or something. If you want to make sure none of them are open, you could select all the open curves and see if it actually brings up anything. I can select all dashed objects too. So select object, dashed objects. So these ones with the dash stroke are selected. And earlier I was talking about selecting objects with a stroke or not. You can also do that here, select object, stroked objects. So whether or not that's useful to you kind of depends on what you're using the stroke for. And there's lots of other options here you can select on. Images is quite useful, also groups and vector layers. So it's a very powerful way of navigating your document, especially when it's something you downloaded that has hundreds or thousands of curves in it, and you really need to make sense of it quickly. If working with large documents with hundreds of objects is something you do a lot, I think you'll also find palettes and global colors useful. I have a video on that that I recommend watching next, and I'll put a link right here for you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.